My name is Carly Tsong, and today we're going to learn how to do a reading for someone else, which is very, very important. So I'm inviting someone else to sit near me. And this is Rami, my husband. And we're going to do a, a reading. Now, there are a few things to learn about reading for someone else. Some of it is very, very technical. But the most important thing is our attitude. First of all, make sure that you have allowance to give advice to someone else. The allowance comes from the fact that they actually asked for a reading and asked you the question and are open to get the answer. Do not do a reading if some, for someone else if you don't have the permission from them. I want to be very supportive of the person that I'm reading to. I want to hold for him the best of him. I want to give him the best advice. The other thing is, I really want to explain things and I want them to understand things. So even if the reading is very clear to me, I want to make sure that they have a, the explanation, all the details, everything so they have the full reading and also understand why do I say the things I say. Okay, so the first thing I do is I shuffle the cards first, and then I ask the person near me, Rami. Yes. Do you have a question you want to ask? Yes. What is the best course to uh, approach my children at this time? Very good question. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give Rami the deck of cards and ask him to shuffle. And while you shuffle, think about the question, okay? So you're putting the question inside the cards. Now, while Rami is shuffling the cards, I'm thinking of what kind of reading am I going to do for Rami today? So this card would tell us what should you do with your children. This card is about what shouldn't you do with your children. And this is how to bring harmony between these two polarities that are inside of you. So, first of all, the card of what to do came out as mid-heaven a card, which is very interesting but it, because it talks about growing up. So there is something to do with allowing your children to grow up, allowing them to mature, doing a growing up processes, maturing processes inside of yourself. So this either might be something that you can teach your children how to let go of childish patterns they have, but also inside of you. How can you let go of childish patterns you have, even as a parent, and be more um, self-maintained. Okay. The card of what not to do, very interesting, is the, the third house, which is communication. This is very strange looking at it first, because communication something that uh, our first advice usually about our children is talk to them, explain to them, think with them, but something here says uh, not to use the lightness and looseness and the uh, clownness with uh, the children. Although if it, this card came, it's one of, of your qualities, and, but it stands as a polarity. But something that asked, asks to be very, very firm. Okay. And how can you balance between these two polarities? And it's by doing. Doing, doing, doing things. Okay? Not talking about things, not teaching things, not saying things, but actually giving action. Doing things. Okay. So this is a reading. I really wanted Rami to have a good answer. I wanted him to have the best relationship with, the, with his children as he wants. It was very, very important for me and this is what guided me while doing the reading. So my attitude is very, very important. 
Second of all, I explained everything. I said, this is what's for you, this is what's against you, this is what will bring harmony. I created a conversation when everything was very, very safe and very, very explained. I think it's very important for people to feel safe, to feel included. So try to do that by reading to other people. The other thing, and it's something that the camera can't cut, catch because this is something inside of me, is that I was very, very uh, mindful and very, very listening uh, inside of me if the person near me is hearing my advice and receiving my advice. Sometimes things are being said and you feel that they find their way to the other person. It's a feeling. I can't explain it. But other times you feel that your words are like coming back to you and that the person is not letting in the information. So this is also something to be very, very aware. Is the person receiving my information or they reject it? And if they reject it, can I say it maybe in a subtler way, more subtle way? Or maybe I shouldn't say what I'm saying because the person is not open to hear my advice. Or can I say it in a more moderate way? It is my job as a reader to find the path into the person I'm reading the, the cards to. So they have the, the best information. Now, another thing that is very, very important is after the reading, uh, take the cards and shuffle them again. And in that way, you bring back your own energy into the cards and they're clean from the other person's frequencies for the next day uh, reading. And this is also, I think, very important to have your own deck. This is a reason, a good reason to have your own deck that mainly your energies are inside of it. You can borrow it for a person if you're doing them a reading, okay? But you're the sole reader of the deck. It's very, very important. I know that I feel very good with the deck that I know it's mine. And if you're um, interested in doing a elaborated reading, doing whole sessions with people, and being a certified card reader, this is also possible. So check up for the details on our site about the elaborated courses of how to read people, uh, the cards in a professional way.